This is a compilation of all of my tutorials on making this cardigan. Right, we're going to make a granny hexagon cardigan. I'm using a chunky weight yarn and a 6mm hook, but you can use whatever you like as this pattern is adjustable to any size yarn, any size hook and any size person, I guess. This tutorial is going to be quite quick as this is a big project. It's going to be separated into several parts too. If you're a beginner, I suggest you tackle a different project as your first project. But if you're determined, start with the granny square tutorial in the description that will teach you the basics and then come back to this video. So I've started with a slip knot using my preferred method and now I'm chaining five. I'm then going to slip stitch into the first chain to make a ring or if you prefer, you could use the magic ring technique. So start with the chain three. I'm going to start all my rows with the chain three and this counts as our first double crochet. I'm then going to work two double crochet into that ring, crocheting over the top of my yarn tail for round one so that I can pull the center of that circle together at the end. So now I've done my first group of three double crochet, I'm going to chain one to make a corner. I'm only chaining one as I don't want my cardigan to be too holy, but you could chain two if you prefer. I'm now going to work another group of three double crochet into that centre ring, then I'm going to chain one. Then I'm going to do another group of three double crochet, and then I'm going to chain one. You need to repeat those two steps until you've got six groups of three double crochet coming out of that centre ring, and then I will meet you back at the last corner because we work that last corner a little bit differently. If you've seen my granny square tutorials before, you know what's coming. So I've got six groups of three double crochet separate by a chain and then we just need to work this last corner. So I like to do a single crochet as my corner. So I'm doing a single crochet into the top of that starting chain. This puts me in the center of the corner. I'm now gonna chain three, that counts as my first double crochet. And then I'm gonna work two double crochet around that single crochet into the space at the base of that starting chain. So just like a granny square, we're only gonna be working into the spaces. So I'm gonna make three double crochet into the next chain one space along skipping all those stitches between the chain spaces. So in this corner, I'm gonna work three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet. This creates the corner of our hexagon and you're gonna repeat that into every chain one space around. So you're gonna work three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet into every single chain one space. Once you finish this round, you should have 12 groups of three double crochet and six chain one corners. I'm going to meet you back at this corner. So here we are at the end of round two. I just need to finish off this corner with three double crochet into that same space that we started in. There isn't a chain here, so you might have to wiggle it about a bit to find that space. Once I've worked my three double crochet, I'm then going to single crochet into the top of the starting chain to finish off that corner, just like I did in round one. This video is now three minutes long, so I will upload part two shortly. This is part two of my tutorial series on how to make a granny hexagon cardigan. In part one, we finished off the second round of our hexagon with a single crochet into the top of that starting chain. Now we're gonna start round three. Just like round two, we start our round with a chain of three that counts as our first double crochet, and then we work two double crochet around that single crochet into that corner space. So just like a granny square, we work into the spaces, and what we do depends on whether we're along the side of the hexagon or in the corner. So we're going to be working into the spaces all the way around. Our first space is along the side, so we're going to do three double crochet into that space. I don't do chains between my three double crochet clusters as I prefer the look of this, but you could do it if you prefer. It won't make a difference to this pattern. Our next space is a corner, so we're going to do three double crochet, chain one, and then three double crochet into that same corner space. And you're going to repeat this all the way around your hexagon, however big your hexagon gets. If your next space is a side, you do three double crochet. If your next space is a corner, you do three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet into that same space. It's simple, it doesn't change however big your granny square gets. This is why this pattern is completely customizable to any yarn and any size. So here I am at the end of round three, just so you can see what it looks like. It was starting to wobble a bit, but don't worry, we want this to happen. So for round four and all future rounds, we just repeat those steps we've done previously. I will be providing a free written pattern in the future once I finish my cardigan for you to refer to when you're making this cardigan. So you're going to keep making your hexagon bigger and bigger and bigger. It's going to start ruffling, don't worry. So I'm just going to show you what a bigger hexagon will look like once it's getting close to the size that we want it. 
So here is my hexagon, it's all ruffly, but this is okay because we're gonna fold it in half and this creates half of a cardigan. You can see here that we've got the sleeve over on the left hand side. Once this sleeve is as wide as you want it to be, that's when you stop making your hexagon. You then fold it in half like this and then I pinned two sides together. This is along the top of the arm so that I could try it on to check it was the right size. So in part three, I'm gonna show you how to work back and forth to make the back of this cardigan a little bit wider. This is part three of my tutorial series on how to crochet a granny hexagon cardigan. Parts one and two, we made a big hexagon that's to your custom size. I ended up doing 17 rounds for mine. I've now folded it in half and pinned the sleeve. And then I've extended one side of the cardigan to make the back a bit wider and create more of a neckline. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this tutorial. It is entirely optional, of course. So here's a hexagon, it's probably a lot smaller than the one you've made, but you can do this with any size hexagon. So I've finished off my last corner with my usual single crochet, and now I'm going to chain three. This counts as my first double crochet. I'm now turning my hexagon over, working from the back, and then I'm gonna do two double crochet into the corner space at the base of that chain. I'm now going to work three double crochet into every space along this side of the hexagon, I'm then going to meet you back once I get to the opposite corner to the one we started on. So here we are in the opposite corner. You can see I've worked a granny group of three double crochet into each space along. I'm now going to chain three and turn my work again. On this row, at each end of the row, we have a chain three and a double crochet at the other end. And then you're going to work a usual three double crochet group into every space along. If you've ever worked the granny stripes pattern, it is the same as that. So I will meet you once I get to the end of this row. So here I am, I've just finished my last cluster and then I'm going to work a double crochet into the top of the starting chain of the row below. You can see this is where I'm putting my hook and I'm just gonna make one double crochet. I'm not doing a three double crochet group. So yeah, that is how you do the granny stripes pattern. To start our next row, we would do another chain three, turn our work and work two double crochet into that first space and then three double crochet into every space along. That includes the space at the end of the row where we've got our starting chain from the row below. So yeah, that's everything you need to do. You may need to work more or less rows than I did. I did four on each hexagon. And then you need to make two hexagons because obviously they're a half of a cardigan each. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to sew them together, but I'm not quite finished my second hexagon yet, so it might be a few days. Part four of how to make a granny hexagon cardigan. So here's one half of our cardigan all laid out. I've left the ball of yarn still attached to the end because I'm going to be cutting it to use that end to sew the seams together. Here's my second hexagon. You can see it is all roughly and yes, it is supposed to be like this. I've now laying my second hexagon with the side where we did those rows back and forth next to the same side on the other hexagon. And then I'm going to line up the sleeve and pull those two corners together to form the sleeve and fold it over and suddenly we have half of a cardigan. So you can see that the edges in the centre don't add up because that's where we did that little extended bit. I'm now going to get some of my locking stitch markers and I'm going to join up the seams with those locking stitch markers so I can try the cardigan on to check that it's the right size and I don't need to add any more rows. So this is just a bit of footage of me using those locking stitch markers to um, attach my seams together before I sew them together. You, if you don't have locking stitch markers, you could use safety pins, paper clips, or even scraps of yarn. I just find this really helpful when I'm creating something with multiple pieces because I can see what it's going to be like in case there's any adjustments before I need to start sewing it together. I was going to use the join as you go method for this, but I've decided to use mattress stitch instead because I love it so much. So this is the mattress stitch. So I'm going to pop my needle from the front through the back loop of that starting chain here. And then I'm going to come up through the back of the back loop of the next stitch along. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. I'm going to go through that back loop and then come up through the back loop of the next stitch. I have a tutorial on mattress stitch. You don't have to use this stitch to join your cardigan. You could crochet it together. You could slip stitch it together. You could whip stitch. You could do whatever join you want. You could join as you go if you're more organized than me.
So this is just another shot of me doing the mattress stitch. I love the mattress stitch because it zips those sides together really nicely and it's quite satisfying to do. Like I said, I've got a very in-depth tutorial of this technique that I will link in this video description. So once I've sewn up the back and both along the sides, I'm going to try it on and show you what your cardigan should be looking like. So here is your cardigan. You can see it's got cropped sleeves and it's got a cropped body. I'm going to be extending the sleeves and the body, doing an edging and maybe some pockets. But you could stop at this point. Right, I'm so sorry for the delay. I've not been well, but today we're going to be finally extending those sleeves and adding cuffs to them. At the end of the last episode, we ended up with these sort of three quarter length sleeves, which we're going to extend and then add a cuff to. I'm still using the same size hook. I'm just using a different brand. So I'm going to join a new ball of yarn to one of my sleeves. I've picked any space between groups of three double crochet and I've pulled up a loop of my next ball of yarn. I'm then going to chain three, which counts as my first double crochet. To extend the sleeves, what we're going to do is we're going to do that granny stitch, those groups of three double crochet, but we're just going to keep going round and round and round until the sleeves are the length we want them to be. So we're going to make that first group of three double crochet into that space by doing two more double crochet. And then into each group all the way around, you need to do three double crochet into each space. Once you get to that seam where we sewed the sleeve together here, I'll meet you there because we're going to do something a bit different just to bridge that gap. So I've done my granny groups until we get to this space. So if you fiddle around a bit, you've got two corner holes from that hexagon. So what we're going to do is we're going to make one group of three double crochet in two of those holes. So we're going to do a double crochet in that first corner space. And then we're going to work a decrease or a DC2 tog, DC2 together stitch over both of those holes. I have a tutorial for this that I'll link in the description, but I'll run through it now. So what we're going to do is we're going to yarn over and then put our hook into that first space, pull up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two loops and then we're going to stop. This is a partial double crochet. We've not done that last yarn over and pull through. So you're going to yarn over and then go into the next corner space and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through the first two loops only. You're then going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. So we've made two stitches, but they've turned into one at the top. You're then going to make one more double crochet in that space. So we're now going to treat this just like any group of three double crochet. So in the next round, we do three double crochet either side of it. We just pretend this is a group of three double crochet from now on. So just get to the end of the round and then I'll show you how we start our next round. So here we are at the end of the round. Here's our starting chain. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into the top of that starting chain. So this is a bit different from how I've done my other rounds of the granny hexagon so far. So you're going to make a slip stitch just like this. And then you're going to slip stitch into the top of the next two stitches because we want to get to the next corner space along to start our next group, uh, our next group of three double crochet. So I'm slip stitching in the next two stitches. And then once I've done these two slip stitches, I'm then going to slip stitch into the space, not into the next stitch. And this means that when we make our next chain three, it will be coming out of that space. So to start the next round, you're going to chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. And then you're going to do two more double crochet into that space and then three double crochet into every space around. Then you're going to join it and you're going to keep repeating these steps until the sleeve is the length you want it to be. So I'm not quite well enough to film at my desk. I've been filming on my sofa and Molly came and fell asleep. So she is going to be a little cute in the background of the rest of this tutorial. So um, th that's the finished sleeve. And then this is the sleeve after I've extended it. I've left about a two inch gap before my wrist so that I've got space for the cuff. I ended up doing 11 rounds to extend the sleeve. And then you can see on the finished cuff, I did some decrease rounds and then I did a sort of cuff. I was going to do ribbing, but I just couldn't get it to work. So I ended up just doing straight double crochet. So anyway, in the next episode, I will show you how to do the decreases and the cuff. In the last episode, we extended our sleeves by 11 rows and we left about a two inch gap to the bottom of our hand for the cuff. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to be doing two rounds of decreases and then we're going to be crocheting the cuff itself. So you could do ribbing. I ended up doing straight double crochet. I tried ribbing about five or six different times, all different sorts of ribbing. I could not get it to work for many reasons. So yeah, you could do ribbing here if that's your preference. 
So here I am at the end of my last round of grannies where I extended the sleeve length and I've slip stitched across to the next space. I'm then going to chain three, which counts as my first double crochet of this round of decreases. So with granny stitch, we usually do groups of three double crochet. For this round, we're going to do groups of two double crochet. So into every space all the way around work two double crochet and this will decrease our stitch count down by a third. So continue doing this all the way around to the end of the round and then I will meet you back at the end of this round to show you how to start the next round of decreases. So you can see here I've done two double crochet into each space around. For this round I could do one double crochet in each space but I found that ended up really gappy. So what I'm doing instead is I'm going to slip stitch across to the starting chain and then I'm going to chain two, not three. So I'm going to chain two, then I'm going to do a double crochet in the next stitch and these two, the starting chain plus this stitch counts as our first DC2 tog stitch, the one that we did um, in the last episode. I'll also link the tutorial for this in the description. So to do a DC2 tog stitch, we make a partial double crochet into the first stitch, and then we do a pass, partial double crochet into the next stitch, then we yarn over and pull through all three loops on a hook. Like I said, I will link to the previous episode and the tutorial in the description. So let's see it again. We yarn over and we make a partial double crochet. We yarn over, we make a partial double crochet into the next stitch. And then we yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. So continue this to the end of the round and you've decreased your sleeve again by one third. You might need to do more or less decreases on this if you're using a different weight yarn or you're doing a very different size to what I'm doing. So for the next round, I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that double crochet, not into the starting chain. Then I'm going to take my hook off because I'm going to swap it for the hook that's the next size down. So I'm swapping from a 6 to a 5.5. You could go down two sizes if you're doing ribbing, but because I'm not, I only went down one size. So my alternative in ribbing is I'm going to chain three, which counts as my first double crochet. And then I'm going to work one double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So one double crochet into the top of each DC2 tog stitch. So here we are at the end of that round. To finish off, you just slip stitch into the top of that starting chain. Then you would chain three and do another D round of double crochet into the top of each stitch and you continue doing this until the cuff is the length you want it to be. I ended up doing four rounds of double crochet. So this is what my finished sleeve cuffs look like. I finished off the rounds with an invisible join that I will link my tutorial for in the description but yeah I'm quite happy with them. I'm a bit sad the ribbing didn't work out but here we are. I love that Molly was asleep in the background of the last two tutorials. She's such a cutie. So this is what your sleeve should be looking like and in the next episode we're going to be working back and forth to extend the length of our cardigan. This is entirely optional so yeah it's up to you if you want to extend it with me. In this episode we're going to be extending the body of our cardigan so it's not such a cropped cardigan anymore. You can of course leave it like this if you want to. We're going to be working granny stripes back and forth to extend the length and we're going to be starting in this corner here. So we're back on my sofa with my gorgeous kitty cat Molly in the background. So here we are in this corner, we're going to be working back and forth in the granny stripes pattern. So I'm going to join a new ball of yarn just like I would if I was joining a new colour of yarn by putting a loop across my hook and pulling it through that corner space. Um, and then I make a chain of three that counts as my first double crochet. I'm then going to make two more double crochet into that same corner space and then all along the bottom of the cardigan I'm going to work three double crochet into each space across the bottom of the cardigan. Um, this is just like if we were doing the granny hexagon but we're going to be doing it back and forth in rows just like when we extended the back of the cardigan. So you're going to do your three groups all along the side until you get to this central area here where we work back and forth in rows and there's the seam to navigate. So here we are at the centre of the cardigan. You can see where we did those rows back and forth to extend the neckline but you can also see we've actually got four quite obvious spaces where we can do our groups of three double crochet. So just like when you're doing your groups of three double crochet between the groups of 
um, three double crochet from the previous round. Here you're just doing your groups of three double crochet basically into every other round, like the side of the round, that gap there. And then the next gap is next to the seam. So we're going to treat those two corner spaces there next to the seam as two separate spaces. So we'll do a group of three double crochet into each space. This is a bit different from when I did this across a, steam, a seam in the sleeves because um, in the sleeves we wanted to cinch it a bit closed. Whereas on the bottom of the cardigan it's going to be around our hips and our bum area. So we want a bit more movement there. So I thought it would be better to not do a DC2 together and do two separate groups of three double crochet. You could, of course, do whatever works for you and your yarn and your size. Um, so yeah, just continue doing this into each space across until you get to the end. And then I'll show you how to start our next row. So here we are at the end of our first row of extending this cardigan. You can see I've done my, my last group of three is in that corner space of the hexagon. I'm then going to chain two. This is a bit different from when we did the granny stripes extending the back of our cardigan. Um, I found that the chain of three was just a bit too big. So the chain of two seems to work better and then the edge isn't so gappy. So yeah, just again, do a group of three double crochet into each space across until you get to the end of the row. And then I will meet you there on how to finish off this row. So to finish off this row, do a double crochet into the top of the starting chain three from the row below. Um, when we're doing granny stripes, our alternate rows um, start differently. So one row we start with a group of three double crochet. The next row we start with a chain and a double crochet each side. So I'm going to chain three here and then I'm going to turn it to start my next row. And then you're going to work two more double crochet into that first space there. That counts as your first group of three double crochet. And then the rest of this row would just be a group of three double crochet into each space. And then you would repeat these two rows that I've just shown you until the cardigan is the length that you want it to be. It can be any length you like. Um, initially, I ended up doing six rows, which I'll show you here. But I did actually end up ripping back the edging and adding an extra four rows. So I did... 10 rows total of this extending the body section and it comes down to about halfway down my hips. In the next episode I'm going to show you how to do a simple double crochet edging around the cardigan. We're almost finished with our granny cardigan but I'm going to show you how to do a simple double crochet edging today. We're going to be starting from this corner. I did an even number of extension rows and I've not cut my yarn. I'm just going to continue. I'm also going down a hook size to a 5.5 millimetre. I want a tighter edging but also I cannot find my 6 millimetre hooks anywhere. So I'm doing a starting chain of three, which counts our first double crochet. Then I'm going to turn my work, which means I'm now working from the right side of the cardigan. So we're in this corner here, so we're going to treat this space here as a corner. So I'm going to do one double crochet into it. And then I'm going to work one double crochet into every stitch all the way along the bottom of the cardigan. We're not going in the spaces, we're going in the top of the stitches. So we're now at the next corner. So I'm going to do my corner just like I would a solid granny square. So I'm going to do two double crochet around that starting chain. We're going to use that space as the corner. And then I'm going to chain one to make the next corner space. And then I'm going to do two more double crochet around that starting chain into that corner space. So you can see here the corner is very similar to my solid granny square tutorial. So we're now at some the side of some granny rows. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two double crochet around the very edge stitch of each row. So we're going to do two double crochets around that stitch there. And then in the next row, you're going to do two more double crochet around that very edge stitch. And you'll repeat this whenever you come across stitches where you're at the side of them, you just do two double crochet around that very edge stitch. So now we're at the transition of where our extension rows become that granny hexagon. So we're going to do one double crochet into that chain one space there, just so we haven't got a gap in our edge in. And then you're going to work one double crochet into the top of every stitch 
all the way along this side of the cardigan which is sort of the where the opening is so you do one double crochet in all of these stitches until you get to the corner of that neckline at the back of the neck and i'll show you how to navigate that next so here we are we've done our double crochet into the top of every stitch and we're at a bit of a concave corner so this is how i worked out how to do this we're going to do a double crochet two together your first partial crochet is going to be into that last stitch of this side this part of the hexagon and then you're going to skip over into that space there and the other partial double crochet of that stitch is going into that space there and then we're on some rows where we're working around the side so we do two double crochet into the side of each of those rows and then we've got a seam here so I'm doing one double crochet into that space there and then I'm going to do a double crochet two together into that space and then we're going to do it across into the next space this is the same as what we did on the sleeves so if you need more of an explanation go and have a look at the sleeves part then i'm going to do one more double crochet into that space and then i'm going to continue working into the sides until we get to the next corner and we're going to do another decrease here so we're going to do a decrease two together the first partial double crochet into that space there and then the next partial double crochet into the first stitch over here and that just cinches that neckline in nicely but not too much it's not too tight so as before, you're going to work a double crochet into the top of every stitch all the way down this part of the cardigan. And then I'll show you how we deal with the next corner as well. So we're at the very last corner of this round and we're just going to do two double crochet into around that stitch there into that space and that completes this corner and then just like with our hexagons we're going to do a single crochet into the top of the starting chain just to set ourselves up for the next row you could do a slip stitch here and fasten off if you want a thin border but i'm going to go for about four rounds so i'm going to do a chain of three and then i'm going to do one double crochet around that single crochet there into that corner space and then i'm going to work one double crochet into the top of every stitch around and when i get to a convex corner so those corners at the openings of the cardigan i'm going to do a corner just like we've done previously um which i will just show you now just so that i've covered everything every eventuality of how you want to customize the edge of your cardigan so here we are at a corner and into that chain one space there we're going to work two double crochet chain one two double crochet and then continue the same as what we were doing before where we just do one double crochet into the top of every stitch and you can make this edging as wide as you like you could do a different edging you could do single crochet you could do ribbing whatever you fancy but i just wanted a nice simple relaxing stitch so the last thing I need to show you how to do is how to navigate that those convex corners that we did at the back of the neck where it's been cinched in a bit. So I'm going to do a double a double crochet two together stitch in the stitches either side of that double crochet two together stitch of the last round. Hope that makes sense here. You can see I've sort of skipped that decrease from the last round. So I've decreased by two stitches and I found this works best for the neckline. So this is what my cardigan ended up looking like. I'm really happy with it. I wish I'd made it slightly bigger, but overall I'm happy. I ended up not adding pockets in the end because they weren't looking right. My favourite thing about this cardigan is the puffy sleeves. I really love them. So yeah, let me know if you're making a cardigan from these tutorials in the comments.